Our speaker this morning is Madison Eckert. Madison is formerly of Hope Story. She is now with Act 5. She's been here before, and we're glad to have her back. Welcome to the stage, Madison. Morning. Uh, yeah, so good to be back. Um, I've been here before with Hope Story, if you recognize that name. I now work for uh, an organization called Act 5, which runs a gap year program. It's an eight-month gap year program in Hamilton, Ontario. We have a house right downtown, and so I hang out with students all the time, and it's a hoot and a half. Did anyone go on vacation this year? Yeah? Where did you go for vacation? Manitoulin Island. I love Manitoulin. Take the Chichiman. Nice. On the way home. Nice. Anyone else go on vacation? Yeah, where'd you go? New Brunswick next week. I hope it's a great time. I was in New Brunswick a month ago. Great spot. Any other vacation spots? Bruce Pins. Ah, oh, gorgeous. Good choice. And there's one other one. New York? It's on my bucket list to go to New York City. So good. So about three weeks ago, um, I went on vacation, and I went to uh, Portugal. Apparently, everyone's going to Portugal, but I didn't know this when I booked the tickets. Uh, and I decided that for this particular vacation, I was going to walk 275 kilometers from a city called Porto in Portugal to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. There's a picture of the map uh, that you can look at. Um, I don't know if you think this would be a fun vacation. Um, I think it's super fun, where for two weeks straight, you walk. You know, you wake up at like 6.30 in the morning, you pack your backpack, you walk until you find an open cafe and get an Americano and a good European croissant, and then you walk for like an hour and a half to two hours along the ocean, and then you sit and you like air out your toes and eat some food, and then you walk for like another hour and a half to two hours, and then you stop and have some lunch, and then you walk for another hour and a half to two hours until you get to your spot where you're going to stay. You definitely take a shower, get some dinner, play some cards with people that you've met, go to bed, repeat for two weeks. It's like 12 days of this straight. So I don't know if you think that's crazy or if you think that's awesome. I think it's awesome, and I did that for two weeks. And so every day I walked about 20 to 25 kilometers straight until I got to Santiago. <clears throat> And most of it was along the Atlantic Ocean. So you can click through some slides, see how beautiful this is. This is, I'm currently taking that picture from Portugal looking at Spain, and we took one of those little boats across. Go to the next one. You know, I walked all those villages through Spain. Like, this is the world. This is amazing. You can go to the next one. Right along the ocean. It was amazing to me that people live right on the ocean. I don't think about that very often, because I don't live along the ocean. Go to the next one. This is the boardwalk that I followed. Just stunning, this beautiful part of the world, and I just walked every day, hours and hours. And uh, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but I didn't just choose, like throw a dart on the map and say, oh, landed on Porto, that's where we're starting, and then pick another spot, about 300 kilometers, Santiago, I guess we're ending there. I didn't do that. Did this thing called the Camino. Maybe you've heard of the Camino. Uh, there's many different routes that you can do on the Camino, but they all end in Santiago de Compostelo. When you translate the word the Camino, it's translated to the way. Maybe you've heard of this. And it's often this spiritual pilgrimage that people have done. A lot of people have done it over the last year, number of years. And so this pilgrimage, it's a journey that's done with intention of either personal or spiritual growth, but there's this intention behind it. And so this particular Camino, which ends in Santiago de Compostelo, uh, Compostela, is said to be the place where the disciple James, where his body is buried. And so when Jesus was walking the earth, he had these 12 disciples who followed him, and one of them was James. And so this man, whose bones are supposedly buried in Santiago, the ending point, the cathedral where you end is where his bones are now, he knew Jesus intimately. He walked with Jesus. They did life together. And sometimes I think about that reality of walking with Jesus and knowing him that well, and it's insane. You know, James and Jesus, you know, they ate together and they got hungry together. They had profound experiences and they did really mundane life together. And they got tired together and they probably got really energetic together. And they had funny conversations and deep conversations and they sat around fires together and then they probably walked a lot together. 
And so James was in close proximity to this man who was God in human form. And that's just crazy to me. This man who knew Jesus that well did that much life with him. But what I love about his connection to the Camino is that he walked with the man who was called the way. You know, in John uh, 14, verse 6, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes through the Father except through me. Jesus says, I am the way. And so this Camino that translates to the way is paralleling the story of a man who literally followed the way. And honestly, I didn't know this connection when I booked the trip. I didn't know James's bones were going to be at the end. But I did have this idea that this thing called the Camino is this pilgrimage where you walk to this destination and that there has to have some spiritual component to it. And so for me, when I chose this, I was eager for this pilgrimage to have space with God to be with the one who is called the way. And honestly, you can't go wrong with being in a beautiful part of the world to do this. So the trick with this kind of vacation, though, or this pilgrimage, is that you never stay at the same place. You're always moving. So it's not like you can take all your luggage to a hotel, plop it in a room, leave, go see the sights, go back, all your stuff is still there. It's not quite how it works. This is the kind of trip where everything that you bring, you are carrying with you. So I brought my backpack with me. This was my closest companion for two weeks on the Camino. Everything that I needed for two weeks had to fit in this bag. Kind of fun. And so before I left, I had to figure out very strategically, what was I going to bring? What did I need? What was I going to fit in here? And what was I going to leave behind for two weeks? And so, you know, my list consisted of like two outfits that I was going to wear while walking with some added layers in there. One outfit to wear in the evenings, my hiking shoes, a pair of sandals, a book and a journal, basic toiletries, a quick dry towel, a whole host of blister band-aids in which I used all of them, some small snacks, water bottles, a few other necessities all crammed in this bag. Now the biggest thing that might sound crazy to some of you is how few pieces of clothing that you actually bring. Hardly anything. You basically wear the same clothes all week, like every day for two weeks. And then you hand wash them in the evening, you lay them out to dry while you're sleeping, and then you put them back on in the morning. It really makes decisions in the morning very simple, I do have to say. Now, I did pack one non-essential item, just full disclosure. Um, everyone has to bring one non-essential item. Not, you don't have to, but I did. And it was my hammock. You can go to the next slide. Um, I have a little bit of a history of bringing my hammock everywhere. And so it was the one thing that was not essential added weight that I would just find the weirdest spots to hammock. This one was between a tree. So why do I tell you about my backpack and what I brought? It matters what you put in your backpack. It matters what I carried in my backpack. I was the only one who could carry my backpack. No one was going to carry it for me because everyone else was carrying their own. And it's not like I had a wagon or something that I could bring with me. I had to carry what was in my backpack. And there were things that I had to leave behind, good things even, you know, like extra pieces of clothing or another book that I really wanted to read and thought I'd have time for, or maybe even another pair of shoes. Like, they're good things, but I couldn't bring them with me. I had to strip it down to the essentials, the things that I would absolutely need. And I had to question, like, even if this thing that I wanted to bring would be good, if it was just going to add a little bit of extra comfort, but not actually essential, had to leave it at home. Even just taking one extra t-shirt was in question. This life that we live is a pilgrimage. And that might sound obvious. We all have our own paths to walk. That might just be like, yeah, Maddie, duh. Like, why are you here? But we each have choice in how we walk this pilgrimage of life. And we have choice in what we pack in our backpacks and we have choice in who we walk it with, and if we're choosing to follow the way. And this isn't about finding a perfect formula or creating a checklist in which we all need to follow it perfectly. Not at all. What I brought in my backpack wasn't the same as the next person. I was the only one who brought a hammock. But what it does involve is this, this thing called paying attention. Now, you might hear the phrase, pay attention, and think of a teacher in a classroom that's like, pay attention, class. Like, listen to what I'm saying and do exactly what I do. You can go to the next slide if you want. And you might hear that and be like, ah, oh, like to pay attention means I just have to like passively listen, just be told what to do and just do it. Like that's, that's not very exciting. But when I think of paying attention, I think of this really involved process 
where you get to like participate in this exploration of paying attention, where you get to look at what's around you, what's going on in you, where is God at, what's in my backpack. You pay attention and explore uh, as an active part of exploration. So just like I had to pay attention to what I put into my backpack, we are invited to pay attention to what's in our metaphorical backpacks. Because after all, we're the only ones who can carry it. So paying attention actually really does impact how we pilgrim through this life. So there are some different buckets that we could consider when we think about paying attention. This summer, I've been really mulling on the verse in Mark chapter 12, verse 30, and it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. You know, when I, when I consider that verse, what I hear is that God created us as whole human beings. Whole human beings. We are spiritual beings. We have brains. We have hearts and emotions. We are in physical bodies. We are whole people walking this pilgrimage. So when we think about what we pack in our metaphorical backpack, if we are people who are going to want to love God more deeply as we pilgrim, we have to consider these four buckets the spiritual bucket, our mental bucket, our emotional bucket, and our physical bucket. And so I want to do, what I want to do this morning, which might be awkward or weird for you, is I want to invite us into a process of paying attention, just for a few minutes. You know, as we start this week, as we're kind of halfway through the summer, gearing towards September, which is often a reset for many, I wanted to give us a chance this morning to just pause to just pay attention to some of these things in these buckets. So if you have a notebook, feel free to take it out, um, write some things down as I walk you through this. If you have a phone, feel free to write some things down. I don't know if there are connect cards or something in the pews that you could use. Or maybe you just want to sit and just reflect um, auditorily. That's also great. So what I want to guide you through is a series of questions. And so I'm on the screen. There's going to be a different set of questions for a physical bucket a different set of questions for a mental bucket, a different set of questions for an emotional bucket, and a different set of questions for the physical bucket. They all interplay together. I know that. Uh, but it's good to like, recognize each of them because they all help us love God more deeply. And now there's a lot of questions between all four slides. I don't want you to get overwhelmed with being like, ah, I need to answer all of them, I need to write them all down. That's not the point of this. The point is to pay attention to what one question grabs your attention. What one question grabs your attention. And then get curious about that one question and be like, God, what are you inviting me into with that one question? And just see what might be that invitation for you as you pilgrim through this life. So feel free to grab a piece of paper or a phone or a pen. Share that around. All right, first I'm just going to invite us to take a deep breath. Big inhale. And exhale. All right, let's pay attention together. Go to the first one. Next one. Next one. Next one. There we go. So I'm just going to read the questions out slowly. What grabs your attention? And get curious about that. For the physical bucket, how often do you move your body? Uh, Walking or other forms of exercise? Is your body getting 30 minutes of movement each day? How are your eating habits? Is your body being fed healthy foods or unhealthy foods? Are you getting a proper amount of sleep? What are your habits when you wake up? Or your habits right before bed? How much water did you drink today? How do you view your body? How much fresh air did you get today? You can stay on that last slide for a second. What question captures your attention?
gonna take you into the next one, to the mental bucket. Again, the invitation is just one question that stands out. Is there something that's been distracting you lately? What's captivating your thoughts? What's been a point of worry or anxiety? What are the things or the voices that are feeding your mind? How much time do you spend on social media? Is there something you'd like to learn more about? Is your physical space chaotic and cluttered that's bringing chaos and clutter to your mind? What do you think about yourself? All right, we can go to the next one. <clears throat> Your heart. Are there emotions that you've been avoiding or hiding from? <clears throat> Do you have safe people to talk to? If you could describe your current emotional state like a weather forecast, what would it be? What do you need right now? What has made you uncomfortable recently? Discouraged or mad? When was the last time you belly laughed? What do you like to do for fun? Let's go to the last one, your spiritual bucket. <clears throat> when you think of how God looks at you, what do you imagine? What kinds of spiritual rhythms do you have? What do you know about God to be true? Where did you see God today? What might be a rhythm to incorporate into your life so as to grow more in your relationship with God? How do you best connect with God? Who are your spiritual community? What are you praying about and who are you praying for? What questions do you have about who God is? So I know there's lots of questions between those four. <clears throat> and the invitation is just one. One question that kind of captures your attention. And I want you to take that one question and share it with someone. Whether that be over lunch today, whether that be if you have a small group, share it in your small group. Try to be as honest as you can. You might be surprised at what question stood out for you or what question has stood out for somebody else. Yeah, try to be honest as best you can with yourself, but also with each other. There's something beautiful about doing this kind of thing with each other to figure out what actually are we carrying in our backpacks. But then as you hear each other respond as well, don't try to jump to a solution or to judgment as, or to comparison as to like maybe their question is a better question than yours. But just listen with curiosity and openness. Just hear where each other is at, what might be stirring in each of you. 
there's this invitation to talk about what we need to empty out of our backpacks. We're all carrying too much. Something that we don't need to be carrying anymore. So that we can be fully present here. <clears throat> I believe that God is here. He's with us always. He is here in this place. He goes with us everywhere we go. And we want to be able to see where God is, to see where he's moving, where he's poking and prodding, where he's making things new, what he's doing in us and around us. But if we're carrying things in our backpacks that we don't actually need, we're going to be blind to it. We're going to be distracted by the weight on our shoulders and not attentive to where God is. <clears throat> we are created to worship. We are worshipful beings created to worship God, to love him with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds, and with all our strength. But it's not going to come naturally. We can't just muster up, I'm going to love God more with my heart, love God more with my soul, love God more with my strength. It's not going to come naturally. We have to fight distractions. We have to fight lies that we've come to believe are true but are not. We have hurts that we experience and wounds that are scabbed over. <clears throat> and I think summer is this really great time to just pause to reflect, to wonder what might be a new start, especially as we gear towards September. But not as just like a new start to become a better person, but as someone who wants to worship God more, to experience more of his wonder and amazement, to see him in ways that maybe you've never seen him before. Because we can't produce this worship on our own willpower, but we can choose to look at what we're carrying, to say, oh, I think maybe this thing is weighing me down and I need to get rid of it so that I can worship more deeply, more fully, more whole. I don't have to suffocate worship out by keeping this thing in my backpack. And then the invitation as we pilgrim through this life, as we pilgrim on the way with the one who is the way, we get to continually look at our backpacks. Every morning we get to unpack it and repack it and adjust, leave things behind, take new things in, and so there's no rush in this. It's an every day, God's mercy is new. Every day we get to look at this. Every day we get to consider what might we need to unpack today. Because we're on this pilgrimage, which is the whole of life. And God is with us for the whole thing. And so there's no rush, but to pay attention to one thing every day and consider what might be the thing that can draw me into greater worship. Let's pray together. God, I'm just so grateful that you um, invite us to be on this pilgrimage of life. That there's no arrival point, there's no destination that you want us to get to except to just show up every day, accept your mercy, and to worship you the best we can with what we've got. But God, you invite us into notice what we're carrying that we don't need to carry. And we need your help with that. We need your help to have eyes to see what is in our bag that is actually non-essential? What are the things that we might need your help in changing or adjusting? How what might we need our community to help us and do this together? God, we want to really worship you, but there are other things that will always captivate our attention. But would you continue to draw our attention closer to you each day, just an inch closer, so that we can worship you more deeply and more fully? In Jesus' name, amen.